It's all about anything. This is Sabcast. Hi, I'm Nigel, and welcome to Sabcast. Today is July 23, 2022, and welcome to episode 6. And hey, if you want more Sabcast, please like and subscribe for more, and I'm also on SoundCloud. Please like and follow. So let's get to stuff. There's no quick talk today because I feel that my topics are going to be long. So, appies. Last episode, I talked about Pepito Maraloto and this Tommy character. And I'm going to explain why, and in my opinion, why Tommy isn't a real friend of the Manolotos. If you haven't watched the show yet, please do. There's a couple of clips on YouTube. A background of him, he was a basketball player in his student days and worked with Mary Carr, another character played by Car- Carmina Villarreal. She's got a YouTube channel, please subscribe to her. Eventually, he went broke, but still lived in, lived in the same subdivision with Mimi, Didi, and the Manolotos. As time went on, he sorted out many schemes affecting the Manolotos and everyone else. So, why do I think that Tommy isn't a real friend of the Manolotos, especially uh, Pepito? If you learn from every lesson learning short film videos out there on YouTube, that is Darman or Jay Shetty, you learn that if a person is friends because of what you have, that person's pretty much a red flag because that person's taking advantage of you. To me, Tommy is, Tommy is taking advantage of the, of the Manolotos, and he's a D to them. Yes, a D. Considering that this podcast is clean, I made the term D as a cleaner version of the usual cuss words you say. Why is he Why is he a D? Aside from the fact that he keeps on asking Pepito for money but not paying them back, one, he wants to get inside of Pepito's house, even though Pepito clearly doesn't want him to. Two, when he was told by Pepito to send his gift to Mimi, well, he did, but instead of telling her it's from Pepito, he told her that it's from him to the point that he wrote from Tommy or something like that on the gift. Three, relating to the O's, he made Pepito give him money by checking him to give a buloy, or donation in Tagalog for a person who passed and, and who was roaming around Pepito's office. And by the way, giving a buloy for the wake is Filipino tradition. Well, there's more, but the point is that, again, Tommy's not a real friend to Pepito and his family. Basically, Tommy is just in it for the money. Despite of that, Tommy has a good spot, but it wasn't for Pepito. It was to a stranger who didn't know. Speak of real friends, to me, Patrick is Pepito's real friend. Because they grew up together in their hometown of Kanyogan. Every time Tommy asks Pepito for money, Pepito knows him so well that he usually doesn't give him money. That's it for this appy. Let's enter to point one. So point one, what would I do if I had $10 million? Alright, $10 million is so much, and if you convert it to Philippine peso, that is equivalent to a whopping 562,900,000 pesos. I'm talking US dollars because if it was Canadian dollars, it would be less but still whopping 431,917, 110 pesos, and 30 centavos. Both of those amounts, not totaling each other, should be enough to build some decent infrastructure, which should create better services for the people. That is bridges, roads, hospitals, schools, yeah, those stuff. And yes, I could fund that if they're doing it, but it's my $10 million, so I get to spend whatever the heck I want. I said in episode 4 that I want to take the normal life. It means no, I won't buy a lot of rich kid stuff. My mom and I have a decent car, bag, clothes. Why do we need something better than that stuff? But considering that I have $10 million, I could just simply donate half of it to Angat Buhay if Lenny accepts foreign donations. That is $5 million. So... So $5 million to Angat Buhay if Lenny accepts foreign donations. About spending on public in- infrastructure I mentioned earlier. I said I could fund that, but nah. It leaves $5 million for me and my mom. I have relatives from back home and on the other side of the world, so it makes sense to me that I give $2.5 million to them. That leaves $2.5 million for me and my mom. Enough to both spend responsibly and irresponsibly. But we're not going to spend irresponsibly on the $2.5 million. But we pretty much have the option to. I'm thinking of splitting the 2.5 million, leaving me and my mom with 1,250,000 each. Now that I have 1,250,000, it makes sense that I leave leave at least $100,000 for myself and put the rest of my retirement fund and college fund and other stuff that's going to benefit me in the future, like buying a home and paying the bills or or crypto, if yeah. The uh, $100,000 the hundred thousand dollars is for my personal spending, both for myself and, and my YouTube channel. So, recap. $5 million goes to Angat Buhay, again, if Lenny accepts foreign donations, if not, any charity because they need it the most. $2.5 million goes to my relatives, 
1250000 goes to my mom, $1,150,000 for my retirement fund, college fund, fund for my new house, and taxes and bills to pay, and crypto. $100,000 left for my personal spending, but I'm not going to like, you know, spend the entire $100,000 easily, though. It's more responsible. That's it. So why did I pick this as a topic for point one? It's because it's inspired by Melly Povenmire's English project of the same name, and her dad is the great Dan Povenmire. It's a, it's a YouTube video. Please, please check it out. Creator of Phineas and Ferb and Miles Murphy's Law. Before I say this, I'm not sponsored by Disney or by him, but he's got a new show, Hamster and Gretel, where Melly stars Gretel. Please watch it. It's going to be fun. I'm waiting for it to be on Disney+. Plus. Uh, so far, no comments on episode 5. So today's question of the day, some YouTubers today got an awesome warehouse or place to do their content. Dude Perfect has a warehouse that, that has a basketball court, soccer field, treehouse, golf simulator, change rooms, golf course, water fountain, and more. And Mark Grober has a warehouse to do some fun inventions and crunch laps. Me, if I had one, I'd put a Hall of Fame playing tribute to the greatest ancestors of YouTube. Like Dude Perfect, Geriatric 1927, Smosh, any famous YouTubers born before 2010. And also podcast studios, but in all honesty, I can't because it's too much maintenance. If you had a warehouse for cool stuff, what, what would you put inside? So, uh, point two, if there's some things I uh, noticed about my school in my hometown in Cebu and my school here in Canada. I'm saying my school instead of schools because not all schools are equal. Now, here we go. So, classrooms back home, the windows are open and we have electric fans. Here, the windows are glass and unopenable. And the rooms are air-conditioned. PE classes back home, I remember that the sports taught in the classes are basketball, soccer, volleyball, and badminton. And usually practice for the annual fun run. But in my school here, it's more than that. While, badminton, while basketball, badminton, and volleyball are, are taught often, soccer is not. So I didn't. So I did remember playing soccer for PE back in grade eight, which is the first school year for me in Canada, but in a different school. Aside from those sports, I remember being taught to chuke ball, even playing dodgeball sometimes, or usually with an, with another class, continuous kickball and six base kickball. I had warm up games before the usual before the usual PE topic. <laughs> Excuse me. In my, in my school, we have an upstairs fitness center. And during my grade 9 days, me and my classmates had PE class at the fitness center for PE. Seriously, my school back home is bigger than my school here. My school back home should, have, should, should be big enough to have a fitness center if it fits, fits in the budget. And here, there's a yearbook club where my schoolmates have the chance to edit the yearbooks. Back home, there's nothing like that. In here, there's a student council where some of my class, my schoolmates gather in the classroom to talk about activities or spirit days we can do in school. Back home, there's no spirit days, but a year after I left, they're doing a student government where students themselves are elected as vice president and vice president and do some ta tasks that, that are just limited to them. Here, my school has a vending machine. Back home, there's not. There used to be pay phones, but they're gone. My school here doesn't have a nurse, but back home, there is. Here, there are P field trips. Back home, I believe there's none. Here, there are change rooms. Back home, I don't know which if we have, but I used to do just change in our classrooms and later in, in our comfort rooms, which here in Canada, we call them washrooms. Back home, all the subjects are learned throughout the year despite the semesters. Same here when I, when I was in grade 8, except for the electives, but in grade 9 and 10 during my at-home learning, the subjects are limited to each semester or, or, or quarter. And also for grade 11, I basically pick classes now and music and arts are electives. There's more. And I gotta ask, is there one thing we can change about schools in the Philippines and or Canada? Comment down below. Thanks for listening to another episode of Subcast. Please tell your families, tell your friends about Subcast. It means a lot more to me. Please like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. And like and follow if you're on SoundCloud. Stay tuned for the next episode. Subcast is all about anything. A presentation of the Periwinkle.